Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be making a video on my brand new Simplex 4010ES fire alarm panel. Um, now I just got this working a few days ago. I had to order some new parts for it because it got damaged in shipping, but here it is. It is fully operational now. Um, I have some devices set up here um, for a little demonstration. So yeah, let's get right into it. So first, here we have the uh, 4010ES. Um, this is actually the same cabinet that a single bay 4100 would fit in, it's just a single bay cabinet. 4010ESs normally come in a single bay cabinet, but can also um, be a uh, two bay cabinet. Um, but those are pretty rare. Um, so we can go ahead and open it up. You can see it has this dress panel right here with the keypad on it. Um, and now it's also where the CPU card is. So you can see there's a um, flash card right there that stores the job, which is basically where all the configuration and programming is on. Um, you see it's pretty simple, there's the piezo right there. Um, Ethernet port is for uploading configuration to it. Um, there's a little coin cell battery for time and date. Uh, it's pretty simple, you can see you have batteries. Um, there's the transformer for power. Now here is the main power supply. Now this is ID NAC addressable, so this panel does not have any NAC circuits. It has an ID NET loop, which most of you probably know is for addressable smoke detectors, basically an SLC. Um, so that's the SLC for this panel, and then right next to it we have ID NAC, which is for the notification. Um, now on this panel it uses Truler ES addressable devices, and you should see that blink, like that. So all the AVs for this are addressable normally, this does not have any normal NAC circuits, except for technically the relay can be programmed as a NAC circuit if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's the basic setup here. Um, now you can see the buttons I've programmed. I have um, priority 2 tests. Now I ran out of carbon monoxide spray, which I'll explain in a minute why I needed that. But I ran out of carbon monoxide spray yesterday when I was programming this. So instead of activating the carbon monoxide with spray, um, to test the carbon monoxide, we're going to press this button, which basically mimics the carbon monoxide sensor going off. Right here we have AB disable, which if you press that, um, you can see it disables. And these are just some random labels they put in. Um, just to kind of make sense of all the what all the devices would be used for in an actual building. Um, so you can see that disables the addressable horn strobe right there. Now I do have other sounders on the system that are not addressable. I'll explain that in a minute. So that's what that button does. And this is to do a self-test on the ES horn strobes. In this case just one, which I'll also explain, which is also a really cool feature. Now above that we have three LEDs. I run them as the ground fault, power fault, which have power fault comes on if there's no AC or the batteries are missing or or if one of the uh, IDNet channels is shorted or overcurrent or anything like that. And the network online, um, this is not connected to the rest of my 4100ES and 4100U network yet. Um, that's where this is node 5 is because I'm planning on this being connected to it, but I'm still waiting for a network card. Um, I still need to order a network card. So right now this LED would normally only be on if it was connected to the network, but I just program it to be on 24-7 because it's kind of nice to have a green light. So yeah, that's basically it for the keypad. Now when we do have, this is the Ethernet port you saw on the back, so you can plug a cable into there to program it. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Now going over devices, we have a standard true alarm smoke detector. I'm not sure what address this is. We have another true alarm smoke detector right there. Those two are just standard. We have a 4099-9003, I believe. Um, it might be two. I don't know. It's just addressable, dual action, no LED. Um, and the cool part is, obviously, we have the um, ES horn strobe, which is set to 110 candela by the panel. Um, code 3, um, uh, standard tone. Right here we have a carbon monoxide smoke detector with a sounder base. So you can see standard true alarm smoke detector right here. But the base is actually pretty special. It has a sounder under here. You can see I covered it up because it's low frequency so it's pretty loud. Um, so this is one of the new low frequency carbon monoxide sounder bases. So it has a sounder obviously right there. It has a carbon monoxide sensor right here for CO gas. And it has obviously smoke. And you could technically put a smoke heat combo into this, I believe. And then you have heat detector too. But I'm too lazy to go grab one of those, so I just put a normal head in. 
Now, um, for carbon monoxide, the standard coating is code 4. Now, the sounder base, um, basically the sounder base is wired up just like a horn. So basically, there's two terminals on the back for ID net to for the carbon monoxide sensor and the smoke detector. And there's two terminals for the horn, just like any other horn on the fire alarm system. It's just two, two wires. And it just gets power for 24 volts. Now, it is continuous. It doesn't have any coating built into it. So what you need is normally the coating is done by the panel. Now, this panel doesn't have any NAC circuits. So I'm using the panel's built-in relay, which I program to be an alarm relay, basically. It has a lot of custom coating done to it. Um, and it's called custom control, and that explains, or that kind of controls how, what the relay does when there's a fire or carbon monoxide event. But basically, that relay comes on if there's a fire, and you can, there's basically that, so basically power comes from that circuit through this module. You can kind of ignore the module for now. It basically just gets passed right through, and it goes to the sounder base. And the relay in the panel, you hear, you'll hear when we activate it, does a code 3, and that's what's coding the horn. Now, if there's a carbon monoxide event, um, basically it will, instead of the panel, will just feed steady 24 volt power into this. And then it will also, via this relay module right here, which would normally be done via NAC circuit, but I don't have any on this panel, so I used a relay, will also feed power into this um, set of terminals on this uh, code 4 module. And that will make the output code 4 to this horn. So basically it's a complicated way of making it do code 3 for fire, and code for, for carbon monoxide. Um, now I kind of had to do this because this none of the simplex panels support code 4 um, except for addressable horn strobes. So if I had a low frequency addressable um, multi-tone I could do code 4 with it which I have on my 4070S but I don't want to put that on here right now. But for conventional like sounder bases you need one of these code 4 modules. So yeah that's basically the setup. So first of all we can go ahead and test um, the carbon monoxide setup. So I have it set to priority 2. You could also set it to supervisory if you wanted to, but since this has priority 2, I set it to priority 2. So this is basically simulating the carbon monoxide on the detector going off. You can see we have an event come in here, so we can acknowledge it. And obviously you can hear it's doing code 4. And you can see this relay module right here is on and the ones had the panels on, basically making this module do the coding. So you can go ahead and hit silence, which I programmed. It doesn't actually make a silence light go on, but you can see it turned off this relay. You can see it's off. And the relay inside the panel, basically cutting power to this base. And we can go ahead and reset, which will automatically turn off the point and everything. And that's all done via custom control. Remember, the panel does not do any of that automatically. So now we can go ahead um, let's do it yes self-test. So basically, yes addressable devices, um, the panel can run a self-test and it basically, I'm not sure how the device knows if it's working or not, but it can tell if it actually makes noise and if it flashes and it feeds that information back to the panel. So it's pretty cool technology. So now we can go ahead and hit self-test. Now we programmed it to do a two second device. So you have to hold it because it does make the horn go off for a second. So you can go back to the system normal screen and hold down for two seconds. And it um, went off for a second, flashed, and now it says self-test completed, and it's back to normal. Now if you were to plug the computer into it and download the logs off of this, it would show the results. You can also do it through the LCD, I believe. But if you plug the computer in, you could actually see the results of how loud each device was, what it was set to, and everything. So yeah, that's what the uh, self-test does. Um, now we can go ahead, and I'm just going to go ahead and disable the ES horn strobe just for now, just so we can hear the sounder bass. And now I'm going to go ahead and activate a smoke. Now I don't have a smoke spray up here right now, so I'm just going to use a uh, magnet on the speaker to activate this. doing the coding inside the panel and this relay is not on which is why it's not doing code 4. So we're going to silence.
You can hear the relay shuts off, cutting power to the horn. So yeah, that's that. And we can see exactly what smoke detector that was. And we can go and reset. And for the final test, I'm going to enable the yes horn strobe and I'm going to pull the pull station so you can hear that both of them actually do sync too. Now what, another thing I will note is um, carbon dioxide has lower priority than fire. So what we're going to do in this test is we're going to set off the carbon dioxide and then we're going to pull the pull station and we're going to see it switch over from doing carbon dioxide coating over to fire. Um, because fire is basically priority one, carbon dioxide is priority two. So it's less important than priority one. So we're going to go ahead and re-enable that, and we're going to put it into carbon monoxide mode. And now we're going to go ahead and activate the pulse station. And you hear that sinking. Takes a second for the ES device to turn off. And as you can hear, it switched over to doing code 3. Um, which is always the custom programming I did. And now we have selective silence. Let's see, is this a 9000? Yes, this is 9003. And if we look right here, you can see exactly what device that was M1 3. Alright, and now we can go ahead and reset. Now it says no party to alarms present, reset complete, because um, I have a program to only do a party to reset, which is separate than the fire reset, if there is a party to event. So because there's a party to event, it automatically reset them when we did a system reset. So there we go. Uh, and that's about it for this video. It is currently New Year's Eve, so happy news, everybody. I'm not going to be doing a live stream or anything this year. Um, so yeah, this is New Year's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.